This screencast is an introduction to strong induction. Strong induction is a variation on regular, the regular principle of mathematical induction that lets us prove theorems um, in a little easier fashion than if we had to use regular induction. And you'll see what I mean in the examples that I'm going to show in this screencast and the next one. So what is the strong form of mathematical induction? Well, it's very similar to just plain old mathematical induction. It consists of a base step and an inductive step, and you're trying to show that some proposition or function, property of the, of the positive integers, is true for all integers, say, n greater than or equal to 1. So how do we do that? Well, again, there's a base step, and that, you, that consists of either one or a small number of propositions being shown to be true to get us started. So rather than just always have one, in general we might have more than one. And then the real crucial difference is in the inductive step. And that says that if PI is true for a, the range of different values for the integers up through but to K, then we can show that PK plus one is true. So we can use all the different propositions being true that are less than or equal to k. If we can prove both those two things, then it, just like with the principle of mathematical induction, we can conclude that pn is true for all positive integers. Another way to think about, or state, I should say, the inductive step is that p1 true and p2 true and pk true, all those being true, imply that pk plus 1 is true. So hopefully a simple example will make this a little clearer. So suppose I wanted to prove that every amount of postage of 12 cents or more can be made with just 4 and 5 cent stamps. How do we do this? We use the same steps that we used for normal induction, but now the base step might look a little bit different and the inductive step will look a little bit different. But otherwise, we should go through the same process. So our, in our example here, um, we actually, need, and this will become clearer later, we need to show that the proposition is true for more than one value of n. Namely, we need to show that it's true for 12, 13, 14, and 15. So we're going to need to show that 12 can be written, made from just 4 and 5 cent stamps, 13, 14, and 15. And you'll see why I picked this in when we go and do the inductive step. So here's the statement of the base step. 12 is equal to some number times 4 plus some number times 5, and where a and b are non-negative integers. Similarly for 13, 14, and 15. So how do we prove the base step? Well, that's easy. We just figure out how we can express 12 as a linear combination of 4 and 5. Well, that's 12 is just 3 times 4, 0 times 5. 13 is just 2 times 2 4 cent stamps, 1 5 cent stamp. 14, 1 4 cent stamp, 2 5 cent stamps. 15, 3 5 cent stamps. So next we're going to go on to the inductive step. Now here's where you need to be careful. So here's the statement for this problem. If for every i, starting at 12, all the way up through k, where we know that k is at least 15, there is a and b so that i is equal to 4 times a plus 5 times b. If we know that, then we're going to show that there are integers c and d so that k plus 1 is c times 4 plus d times 5. So if we can show that, that implication, if we can show that's true, then we're going to be able to conclude that any amount of postage, 12 cents or more, can be made with just 4 and 5 cent stamps. Pause the video for a second and make sure you sort of understand this statement because it's kind of complicated. So on this slide, we're going to improve the inductive step. And here's where you're going to see why I had to show four different cases in the base case. 
So what do we want to show? We want to show that k plus 1 is equal to some integer times 4 plus some integer times 5. Well, how can we write k plus 1 so that we go back and we're computing amount of postage with 4 and 5 cent stamps that we know we can do? Well, we put a 4 there and then k minus 3. That's certainly what k plus 1 is equal to. 4 plus k minus 3, and we know that since k is at least 15, remember we took our base case all the way to 15, that means k minus 3 is at least 12. And we know that every amount of postage between 12 and 15 we can get using 4 and 5 cent stamps. So we'll just write that down. k minus 3 is certainly between 12 and k. So k minus 3 can be written as some s set of 4 cent stamps plus some set of 5 cent stamps. And we, t we can justify this, as I said, by the inductive hypothesis. Okay, And so then we write k plus 1 equals 4 plus k minus 3, and then we still have our 4 then for the k minus 3, since we can write it as a sum of 4 cent and 5 cent stamps, we add this to it. Then we just reorganize, and we've shown that k plus 1 can be written as a combination of 4 cent stamps and 5 cent stamps. Well, we're not quite done, but we've done all the hard work. Now we just invoke the principle of strong induction. Um, since the base step and the inductive step are both true, by the principle of strong induction, all amounts of postage for n bigger than or equal to 12 can be obtained using 4 and 5 cent stamps. Now I think this is a pretty hard concept for most people the first time they see it. So go back, you may need to go back and review the video, and when you do, uh, make sure you think about why the base case consisted of four different values for the postage, and how did we know to use the 4 cent stamp? to prove the inductive case. These two questions obviously are related to one another. In the next screencast, um, I do another example in even more detail. So hopefully between the two of those, that'll give you a good idea for how strong induction works, and then we'll talk about this in our next class.